All right, all right. We're sitting here once again with my brother. There is no other. My brother T5 DL Ben Levy, better known to the community as Zion Lex. How are you, my brother? I'm doing fine, Chief. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Excellent. Thanks to the most high. I feel great. Yes. Um, so it's been a while since we sat down. I believe um the last time we sat down we were um I believe it was the Isaiah fifty three thing. Yep, we talked about uh, Isaiah that was in the winter in context. That's right. About eight hours worth of video. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if we count two the both days, yeah, both settings. Yeah, it was about eight hours worth of videos. So I know we usually um we don't do live videos, but I know that you went through a great deal to to try to um to be here with me today. I know that you um that you that you're teaching a Hebrew class now. That's right. Um how is that going for you? That's going excellent, man. We have over seventy plus students. Right. I have three different classes, different days. Uh we have about um, in one of the classes, we have about 65% of the people reading. In another class, we have about 75% of the people reading. And this is only six and seven classes in. Okay. So, you know, I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, off the bat, the, you see the question? Uh, um, K. Israel, uh, brother, so I never say you put the Bible down. Please tell me that ain't true. Oh, come on, man. Okay. okay. So I guess we're taking a live question. Yeah, we, we, we might as well. We might as well, right? So, uh, so I, I mean, absolutely not. I mean, if you've, you've, if you've been following anything that I've done in the last couple of years, you, sh you should know where my passion is. You should know where my heart is. My heart is here. My heart is in the Torah. You see, what a lot of people need to realize is that Brother Sarnetta's platform, as powerful as it may be, at the end of the day, it's a business for Brother Sarnetta. And I take this way of life as many of us do who are practitioners very serious i'm not really interested in driving anyone's uh views up just so that they can create revenue if people want to have dialogues we can have dialogues so some other will say you know zion lux is putting down the bible because what he's trying to do is he's trying to um ignite a fire within me to come and engage him online on his channel and at the end of the day this is just driving viewership and revenue to his channel and quite frankly uh, there's nothing that we're getting out of it on any level. So at this time, at this stage, in this moment, it simply is just something that's not on my to-do list. Okay. There you have it. Brother Zion Lex has not put the Bible down. Certainly not. Certainly not. So tell me, what, what have you been doing this summer? I heard of your trip to, um, to, to Michigan, um, to Detroit. Um, how was that? What was that experience like? And what, what was your reason for going out there? First and foremost, I want to say hallelujah, giving all honor and praise to the power of our ancient forefathers. Elohei Abraham, Elohei Yitzchak, where Elohei Yahakov, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Um, it's been a beautiful summer, man. I had a beautiful summer. It's, I'm actually sad to see the summer close. It had such a great run this summer, man. I, I, I almost want the season to stretch, if it's the season and not necessarily the reason. <laughs> you know, it's been really, really good, man. Uh, I traveled to a couple places. Uh, I've been to Georgia. Never been to Georgia a day in my life except for this summer. Went to visit my parents. My parents just bought like a mini mansion in Georgia. Um, I myself may be moving to Georgia as well. Um, so, you know, it's definitely down there. Um, on my grind, seriously, visiting my parents and just taking a look at the uh, landscape, literally. Um, then I went to uh, Detroit, had an amazing time at the Detroit Great Awakening Conference, headed by Dr. Kenneth Howard, as well as Ron Dalton Jr. from Hebrews to Negroes, the Hebrews to Negroes documentary film series, which has been streaming online and in theaters across this country. Salute and shout out to those brothers for their hard work. That Detroit trip, cheap was something to attend. It was really, really powerful. I enjoyed myself. Had a lot of great people there. Had a lot of great people reach out to me. I even had people on the street stop me and say, hey, are you Zion Lex? Yes, I'm Zion Lex. I noticed you from Sarnetta. You're on Sarnetta, right? I said, yeah. As I'm walking away, I said, wow. Because I thought that I may know maybe five or six people at the event. 
of which that turned out that over the 500 people that attended this event, this event had well over five to 700 people there throughout the course of the four day weekend. And uh, everybody there pretty much knew who I was, which was a surprise to me. I'm very humble about um, how I'm received. And uh, I mean, if 500 people aren't in my inbox every day, I don't think there's 500 people that know me as far as I'm concerned. Right. You know, because we live in a world where interaction is, is existence. And if we don't interact, it's, it, it's, it's as if it almost doesn't exist. Right. So to my surprise, man, there was a lot of people that followed the work that not just I'm doing alone, but that we have been doing together. Because there were people that literally said, and where's your brother, Chief Uzael? Right. Is he going to be here too? Is he here? Is he on the way? Is he already here? Right. You know, so people are definitely noticing the work, man. That spoke volumes. Um, let's, let's be clear on something. The work that you and I have put in since 2015 has not been in vain, brother. You know, a lot of people have been watching the, the, the videos that we've done. Some of the videos that you and I have done, man, I mean, these are five, six hours videos at one time. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's not an easy thing to commit that much time to do that. Right. And then you're speaking, you're engaging, but what a lot of people may not know about you is that you're also behind the camera. You're also editing, you know, you're also helping to lead a congregation, you know, you're also a father, you know, you're also a husband, you know, you're doing a lot. When you consider all these variables, people got to almost take their keep out off to you. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. You know, they, people, and, 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 it was, and it was well received. We were well received. Even though you weren't there, we were well received in Detroit. And... Um, to my surprise, man, I, I was given an award for Hebrew Scholar of the Year, right. something that we don't do these things for acknowledgement. We don't wake up every day and decide to post a new video because we are, we're three followers behind. Right. We don't wake up every day and decide to post a video because we don't have enough Kesev in the bank. We right. don't ask people for money. Right. You know, we, we're not doing things like that. You know, if anything, we say to the people, if you'd like to see us do these things on a larger scale, then yeah, if your heart moves, you donate. Right. Because your donation will help to us to put together future events or to do this in a much bigger capacity. Absolutely. Right? So we definitely appreciate those things. So yeah, I walked away with a, um, an award, Hebrew Scholar of the Year. Our brother Divine Prospect was also there. He walked away with an award for uh, unity um, in that he's a person that he's been going through uh, several different communities among Israelites uh, in the last couple of years, and he's received wow. in pretty much every community. I don't think nobody closes their door to Brother Devon Prospect. He has an ability to enter every community because of his spirit. You know what I mean? Wow. Shout out to that brother. Um, Rabbi Akwati was there, coming all the way from Las Vegas. Um, wow. This is our brother from Nigeria. A uh, very, very intelligent man, very honorable man. The type of man that everywhere we went in Detroit, he looked at me and said, put your money away. What you think this is? You know, that kind of person, that kind of brother. You know, you gotta respect that. You gotta respect that about people. Um, to my beautiful sister, Sister O'Neill Alston, who's an author, as well as Rabbi Akwati, he's an author as well, but to my sister O'Neill Alston, um, she was there as well. She spoke very well. Uh, she promoted her book, uh, Prophetic Whirlwind, of which I had the, op the honor and the opportunity of interviewing her on. She's a very powerful sister. Um, in fact, just a week ago, she uh, invited me to have dinner with a couple of um, sisters that were coming from Uganda. You know, I met some um, Uganda, uh, Ugandan uh, Israelites that okay. were actually here in New York City okay. because they're doing rabbinical training. You know, they were accepted to one of the greatest uh, rabbinical programs here in New York City. And uh, we had a beautiful dialogue with them. And they said a lot of things during that dialogue that moved me. One of the things that they said was that uh, the natives in Uganda, who are by definition referred to as the Bantu, they said that the culture of the Bible is survived in the tradition and the culture in Uganda, but in particular, the Bantu tribes. This is something that we don't really get to hear right. from native people actually on the continent. 
we usually have this dialogue in the conscious community. Right. You know, who's an Israelite? How right. do we know you an Israelite? Right. You know, what's your genealogy? Does your DNA trace back to the land? You know, what tribes in Africa could you possibly be from? Be from? Right. Is it the Igbo? Or is it the, is it the uh, Bantu tribes? And our sisters in Uganda said, listen, when you listen to the language, there's Hebrew among the Bantu tribes. When you watch and you observe the culture, this Hebrew culture, this Torah that survived among the Bantu tribes. She even went so far as to say that their oral traditions say that they began in the land of Israel. Oh, wow. And that they came to this region through exile and through dispersion. Wow. That the greater half of the Bantu tribes, their oral tradition doesn't suggest but quite literally tells that they are coming from the land of Israel ultimately. That is the land of their ancestral origin, according okay. to many among the Bantu tribes, at least in Uganda. Okay. Very, very powerful. Um, so yeah, the Detroit trip was amazing. I also met a sister called uh, Jubilee Hosanna. She's the younger sister of uh, the actor, uh, Brandon T. Jackson. Wow. Very powerful young lady. Wow. Very spirited. I mean, when she gets up and speaks, she can move a crowd. Uh, she inspired me so much, touched me so much with her words that when I went home, I looked her up on YouTube and watched a couple of her videos, and she's just a phenomenal sister. Um, I believe like she's in her late 20s, if not early 20s, but just a phenomenal young lady, young woman, young daughter Zion. This is something that is just so honorable to see because in our community, you know, the men take the initiative to get on the forefront. We don't have too many sisters that are on the forefront like that. So for me, it was a, it was a breath of fresh air to take in that spirited moment and see our young sister perform on the level that she did. And um, also coming home, I connected with her older brother, Brandon T. Jackson, the actor. Some of you may know him from the movie Percy Jackson. Some of you may know him from the movie uh, Big Mama's House with Martin. I mean, we had so many dialogues since we... Was he in a movie with Bow Wow, too? Absolutely. Him and Bow Wow was in a movie, too. Absolutely. Uh, Roll Bounce. He was in Roll Bounce with Bow Wow. That's right. He was also in Roll Bounce with Bow Wow. And, um, I mean, if you look him up online, Brandon T. Jackson, I mean, he's in a lot of movies. You know, his father is very well known too. You know, they, they come from a family of talented and spirited people as well. His father is a pastor, mother and father are pastors of a mega church in Detroit. And um, we've been having some beautiful conversations behind the scenes, uh, some of which I'll touch on in brief later on in the dialogue. I don't wanna let too much out the hat, but um, I've been talking to this particular brother now um, for a long time. And uh, we've really, really, really been having some very, very heartfelt dialogue about what is the next step. So we know that we're awake. We know that the awakening has long begun. What is the next step? How do we attain feasible, if not genuine, um, unity? How do we achieve a central understanding of the text? This is the most important conversation to be had in this moment in time. It used to be, are the people aware of who we are? What can we do to bring awareness to who we are? Well, guess what, it's 2019 and everyone knows what an Hebrew Israelite is. If you at least have Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, or Twitter, you know what a Hebrew Israelite is. If you live in a major city, you've seen some different groups represent Hebrew Israelites, of which none of these groups represent all of Hebrew Israelites, right? right? But you've seen it, you've heard it. But the biggest question now should be, how do we attain a central understanding of the text? Because in order for us to have genuine unity, we have to be able to look at the book as one body. There should not be communities practicing different versions of Torah. In other words, one group should not look in a particular passage and have a completely converse or obverse um, interpretation than other groups because this leads to fallouts. This leads to confusion and ultimately it tears apart any unity gain.